What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a newer single board computer on the market by Kados and this is known as the Kados Vim 3L. About a month ago I took a look at the Kados Vim 3 and that was an absolute beast of a single board computer. One of the highest benchmarking single board computers that I've ever tested on my channel. But now they've released the Vim 3L and I believe the L stands for light because this is definitely not as powerful as the Vim 3, but it is packing a new SoC that I haven't tested before, and I wanted to take a closer look. But before we get started here, I just want to get a couple things out of the way. This is an early review unit. These are not available to the public as of making this video. The software that I'm using on this board right now is still in the early stages of development, and it's Android 9.0. I've personally not been able to find a working Linux build yet for this, but when this is officially released, I will come back and make another video. As for pricing, Kados does have a pre-order up. You can pick up a kit for as little as $49.99 all the way up to $69.99, depending on the accessories you want added to your kit. I will leave links to their website in the description in case you're interested in picking one of these up. As for specs on the new Vim 3L, for the CPU we have the new Amlogic S905D3. Now this is a bit different from the old S905 or the S905X2 because we have a better GPU and a higher clock. It's a quad-core Cortex-A55 at 1.9 GHz and the GPU is a Mali-G31 MP2, so it's a dual-core GPU, up to 800 MHz. As far as I can tell right now, there's only one RAM variant of the Kados Vim 3L, and that's going to come with 2GB of LPDDR4, 16GB of built-in eMMC storage, SD card slot, and you can always use USB for extra storage. Like always, Kados jam packs their board with tons of different I.O. So I'm going to go over a few of the notable ones. The board does contain 802.11 AB, GN, and AC Wi-Fi, plus Bluetooth 5.0. We have one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0 port, USB Type-C, but it's only running at USB 2.0 speeds, Gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, a programmable MCU, external power, function, and reset buttons, and like most boards, we still get the 40 GPIO pins. Moving around back, we have an SD card slot, an MIPI CSI connector, MIPI DSI connector, plus an M.2 slot. It only does PCIe X1, USB 2.0, I2S, I2C, or it could be programmed for external GPIO connections. As you might have noticed, I did leave a few things out, but I will leave links to Kadas' website so you can check out the full specs. So as of making this video, the only operating system that I have available at my disposal is Android. And it's a pretty bare version of Android. This is Android 9.0 with no Google Play Store installed. Hopefully this is added down the road or easily accessible when you install Android on your board. For my app downloads, I've been using Aptoid or Aptoid TV. I've been able to get a bunch of stuff running, but there is some stuff that's not working right now in this build. Like I said, this is a very early review. So as you can see, it's a pretty basic version of Android. I'll go into settings here. Now they do claim that this will do 4K 75 Hertz. Now I'm not sure about video playback at 4K 75 Hertz off of this chip. I've had a lot of trouble in the past with these Amlogic chips in 4K. I'm sure there's some 4K video formats that'll work like that, but not every single one of them. One of the cool things that Kados adds to all of their Android builds for their Vim boards is device preferences. So I do have the cooling fan and heatsink installed. I've set it to medium speed. You can set it to automatic, low or high. So it's on right now. It is sufficiently cooling that CPU. LED control on the board itself. And there's a bunch of other settings in here specific to the Vim boards. So the first thing I always like to do when I get a hold of a new single board computer and I install pretty much any operating system, especially Android, is run a few benchmarks. I did have to download all of my benchmark apps through Aptoid and Aptoid TV, and I also sideloaded 3D Mark because I couldn't find it on those stores. First up, we have Geekbench 4. Single core really isn't looking great with a 905, and keep in mind I do have that fan cooling that CPU, so it's not thermal throttling. Multi-core is a lot better than the old S905, but overall looking at these scores, this is a low-end chip. As a point of reference, the more powerful and more expensive Vim 3 with the Amlogic A311, single core was 1522, multi was 4165. The build of Android I'm using right now on the Vim 3L does not have Vulkan built in, but I was able to run an OpenGL benchmark. This is 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme, OpenGL ES 3.1, we scored a 342. The Vim 3 with OpenGL scored an 1858, so we're really low on the scale here for OpenGL ES 3.1. 
And finally, Antutu. Love it or hate it, everybody wants to see it run on an Android device. Overall score, 74,349, and where this is really, really lacking is that GPU. For the Vim 3, overall score is 134,643, and the GPU comes in at around 20,000. Another thing I always like to test on these single board computers is video playback because a lot of these companies do claim that these will do 4K 60fps and that's only with certain file types or streaming video. Now the claim to fame on this new Amlogic chip is 4K 75fps and I just don't think it's going to handle it with certain video types so we're going to get right into it. I do have a few videos that I normally test on all of these single board computers. First up, Big Buck Bunny, 4K 60fps. MP4. We're going to use the built-in media player because that's what we have access to right now. And obviously we're not doing 4K 60 FPS here. This is a harder one to run and few single board computers run this at full speed. I completely understand that. But when a manufacturer comes out and just says 4K 60fps, a lot of people expect it to run 4K 60fps. We'll move back, same video, 4K 30fps. So as you can see, it's handling the 4K 30 FPS version quite well. And a lot of these chips do do 4K 30 quite well with a lot of different codecs. Since we are able to do 4K 30, I'm pretty sure that the 1080p 60 FPS version is going to run fine. Very smooth playback, 1080p, 60fps. And when I recommend single board computers to people for media consumption, I always tell them these are really meant for 1080p playback. So that was native video playback, what about streaming? Unfortunately, Netflix isn't going to work with this, at least as of making this video, maybe later on down the road. I have no doubt that this hardware is capable of streaming 4K 30, 4K 60, but a lot of the apps on the Google Play Store just aren't going to work with a box like this, especially Netflix. Even when the Vim 3L gets Netflix support, there will be no option inside of Netflix to stream 4K. You'll be stuck at 1080p. But I still wanted to see how it handled YouTube video playback. Now it's saying we're at 4K, but the viewpoint's going to be at 1080p. I'll turn Stats for Nerds on. And overall, it's handling it really well. It does say 15 drop frames, and that really happens a lot when you first start up a video, so I'm not going to count that. And in all actuality, this is only streaming at 1080p because I'm not on a 4K screen. So this unit is perfectly capable of 1080p 60fps playback from YouTube. Next thing I wanted to test was some native Android gaming. First up, we have PUBG. I'm set to the lowest resolution and the lowest frame right here and it's not looking good right off the bat. It's actually working much better than I expected it would, but it's still really laggy, so in my opinion, this hardware just isn't powerful enough to push PUBG. Here's one more native Android game. This is Real Racing 3. This has been out for a long time, and it's very well optimized for a lot of different devices, and as you can see here, it's running pretty good on this chip. This wouldn't be complete without some emulation testing. This is PP SSPP, Tekken Dark Resurrection at 2x resolution. Seems to be running great, but every once in a while we will get some choppiness. When it comes to God of War Chains of Olympus, it's pretty much a no-go. I have every hack on and this is at 1x resolution. 
we're only at about 25 FPS, so it's just not going to cut it with this game. There was some other apps that I wanted to test here, but unfortunately I'm getting a black screen, and keep in mind that this is a very early unit with early software on it, and that's what it really comes down to. So Minecraft, RetroArch, Asphalt, and Redream just went and launched for me. Now as it comes to the benchmarks, I don't think we're going to get any higher scores later on down the road. I mean, maybe by 100, 200, 300 points in some of them. So for now, that's pretty much it for testing. I do want to come back to this when I get a more stable version of Android and Linux. I know this is going to sound a little odd, but if I had to place this somewhere with different Android devices, I'd put this a notch ahead of the Amazon Fire Stick 4K. And it really comes down to the performance I've seen so far and the benchmarks I've ran. Of course, this has more storage, more RAM, and more I.O., but if you just want to get one of these to run Android on, it's only a bit more powerful than the Amazon Fire Stick 4K. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. That was just a quick look at the Kados Vim 3L. If you're interested in seeing more testing done on this board, definitely stay tuned to the channel because as soon as I get a more stable Android build and a Linux build, I'll be doing another video. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Vim 3L, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.